Hi there, we're going to have a look at expanding brackets and that's basically taking a bracket with some algebra inside and multiplying it by something on the outside. Um, to start us off, I'm going to take you back to something that hopefully you're very familiar with which is multiplying a couple of numbers. Now a lot of you may decide that you want to do a grid method for this particular multiplication so we split it into 20 and 3 times 8 and what that allows you to do is more simple calculations we do 8 times 20 which is 160 and 8 times 3 which is 24 and what we do is we then add those two together to get our final answer now I'm just going to write out our calculations slightly differently because what we've done is we've done 8 times 20 3 and I'm going to write 23 as 20 plus 3 and as you can see here, now I've created a bracket with the term inside and what you'll notice is I've done 8 times 20 which is 160 and I've done 8 times 3 which is 24. This is the idea we're going to use for expanding algebraic brackets. So if I create a different scenario, some brackets where I've got 4 and that's been multiplied by x plus 5. We apply the same process of doing 4 times the x, which gives us 4x, and then 4 times 5, which is 20. And that process there is expanding brackets. So let's see if we can apply it to a few different problems down here. Feel free to go back and have another look if, you're, if you need a second go at the explanation. Okay, so let's have a look at this one here. We've got 3 times a, which is 3a, and we've got 3 times 4, which is 12. Uh, for the next one, 4 times a is 4a, and 4 times negative 5. So there's a minus 5 inside, which means that is negative 5. So if we're doing 4 times negative 5, that's negative 20. You may want to pause the video at this point and have a go at the remaining questions and then play the video once you've got your answers and see if you were right. Hopefully by this point you've had a go at some questions or you're just sticking with the video because you want to get a bit more practice of understanding before you have a go. 7 times, this time we've got 2b. Don't change your method too much though. 7 times 2 is 14 and times up by b as well, 14b. And then 7 times 1 is 7. This time we're doing 15 times 2b. So 15 lots of 2b is going to be, you got it, 30b. And then we've got 15 times negative 4. So that's going to be negative 60. Now I'm going to introduce some letters outside and more than one letter as well. So now we're going to have to do 3a times another a. So if you like, 3a times a. Now hopefully you recognize a times a is a squared. And that's what we're going to have here is 3a squared and then we're doing 3a times 4 so 3 times 4 is 12 3 times 3a times 4 is 12a let's make that one black as well just make sense okay so we've got 4 times a which is 4a and we've got 4 times negative 5b so 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, and don't forget the b afterwards. For the next one, we're going to be multiplying, oh, wrong colour, sorry, 7b times 2ab. So let's do it step by step. 2 times 7, or 7 times 2, is 14. There's an a, and then we've got a b times a b, which gives us b squared. 
seven B times A seven A B. You could put seven B A but for some reason we just feel obliged to do them in alphabetical order. Mathematically it doesn't make a difference. Right, now we've got a few more terms. We've got 15 AB times 2B. So we're going to have 15 times 2, which is 30. There's an A in there, and then there's B times B. And then finally, 15 AB times negative 4a squared. Again, doing this step by step, it's a positive times a negative. It's going to be take away. 15 times 4 is 60. a times a squared, so a times a times a, is a cubed. And then we've got the b that we multiply by as well. That's expanding brackets. And if you're feeling confident with that, you may want to have a look at factorizing brackets, which is going the other way. Thank you for your time.